In this video, we're going to talk about the comparable interface. Now, the comparable interface is something that you may find yourself wanting to use in certain situations. Uh, it's an interface that comes built into Java, so you don't have to write it yourself. And usually we use something like this interface in order to help us sort lists or otherwise order our objects in a particular way. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly it is that you have with the comparable interface. So with the comparable interface, what you have to do, remember we have an agreement between the interface and our class that implements that interface, what methods we're going to have. Now the only method that we have to have is a public int compare to method. Okay. Now what this takes is just any object and we're going to call it other. Uh, that's usually how it's referred to in this case. So other object. And this is the only thing we have to implement from the comparable interface. Okay. And there are some important things that you need to understand about what it expects in terms of ordering and other things from uh, your code from what you implement here. So the comparable interface expects a zero if two objects have the same order. Okay. It expects a negative value if the object that uh, you have, your current object, if this comes before other and a positive value if this, your object, comes after the other object. Okay, so again, if you aren't understanding that this terminology, make sure you come back, you go back a, a few lectures and you check on what this is and why it is important because that is a really important keyword here. All right, so we have two objects and if two objects have the same order, then we get a zero. If our object, this, comes before the other, we return a negative value and we return a positive value if this object comes be after the other object. Now, there's some terminology here that's important. So compare to expect something called total ordering. So total ordering is, means that there is going to be three key things to keep in mind, three uh, pieces of terminology to remember here. So there is irreflexive, and it sounds big and fancy, and it's not, don't worry. Irreflexive just means that for all, for all of your objects that you are comparing, right, so this is particularly for all objects of the same type, uh, comparing, oh, Comparing, let's say, object A to A always returns zero, okay? So if you compare an object to itself, you will always get that they are supposed to be at the same order. This is really important for consistency. That is the irreflexive portion of to total ordering. Next, we're going to talk about the trichotomy. Ooh. Hold on one second, having a little bit of trouble here. Trichotomy. Make sure I spell this right. All right, so trichotomy. The trichotomy says that for any two objects, well, 
let's call them A and B, all right, that either A can be before B, A and B have the same order, or B comes before A. And that while any of these things could be true, only one can be true for any two objects. All right. So for any two objects, we have to have only one of these things happen, which is again about consistency. Now, the exact terminology here and how this is determined is very, very mathy, but this is a very simple concept to understand in general, right? We're not gonna worry about the math part, we're only gonna worry about the terminology and what exactly it means. So irreflexive, for all objects, comparing an object to itself always returns zero. Trichotomy, for any two objects, A and B, a can come before B, A and B can have the same order, or B can come before A. Basically, we can't have a circular uh, lineup of ordering, right? So if I have A up here and say, hold on, no, this doesn't make any sense. How I was planning on drawing this doesn't make any sense now. Um, so let's say that we have an order. Let's say we have this nice little array here. All right, and I'm going to put in certain values here. Let's see if I'll actually do what I want it to do. It is not. All right, so let's say that, let's try to do this a little bit differently. All right, so let's say that I wanna put an order in here and I want there to be a particular set of values, right? So in, like I want all of my values to be ordered correctly. So I'm gonna have a bunch of different objects, right? And let's say that I'm gonna particularly start with ordering our two objects, A and B. Let's say I go ahead and put A somewhere. All right, so I put A here. You can't really see that color, so let's change that up. All right, so we have this a object, right? And we also want to put B somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and put B where we think it should go. So let's say we put B before A, right? So B is going to come after, come at, uh, A is going to come after B in this ordering. Well, what we're saying is, is that we can't also put B here. We can't put B after A. This can't happen. We can only have one or the other, or we can have both of them in the same space, okay? But what we are going to assume here is that B comes before A, and that's just a nice example of what that might look like, all right? I'm just going to scale that down and move that over here. So essentially, we have a minimal value here. It can't be cyclical. So we have a minimum here, and we have a maximum here. And we don't actually care what the min or max are, but basically, our objects have to fall somewhere on this scale of min to max, and they can't shift around on it. They have to be consistent, and they have to be consistent in relation to each other. All right. Now, if you change an object's values or properties, this might change its ordering, that's fine. But we're talking about if they are not changed, uh, if they're maybe immutable objects, 
or if we're just trying to uh, get an exact ordering for what's happening right now. So the last piece of terminology that you need to know is something called transitivity, okay? So transitivity is that if O1, so let, let's, let's have that A and B again, sorry. So if A comes before B, right? Then we have B comes before a third object C. So A comes before B and B comes before C, then A comes before C as well. Okay, so that's really simple. That basically falls in line with that little line analogy that I was talking about before where we have a minimum and maximum and the objects have to be placed somewhere on this line. Uh, and it's a very good visual representation of what we're doing here. All right, so this covers most of the terminology you need to have with this. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about here is that uh, we have zero should also relate to the equals method. So um, I guess this isn't the last bit, but the second to last bit here. So this irreflexive bit right here, okay, this bit we are going to say should relate to the result here should be similar to that equals method we talked about before. Okay, that's all that is. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is this is the semantics, right? So all of this total ordering here that we're talking about, this total ordering, it's all semantics, all right? So this is what's expected. And it's what we, you know, when we're using the comparable interface is what we should expect when we're doing this. It's not something that, like when you're using the comparable interface, and you're calling it on different objects, you're expecting it to follow this total, total ordering principles, all right? So that we have zero when two objects have the same order, a negative value if it comes before, and a positive value when it comes after. And we also expect these things down here at the bottom, right? This irreflexive, the trichotomy, the transitivity, okay? But this is all semantics. Semantics is not enforceable by the Java compiler like we talked about in the previous video. Semantics is something you have to follow when you're programming. So when you're using an interface like this, when you're using the comparable interface, you need to make sure that you're following the proper conventions, the proper expectations, the proper semantics for the particular method that you're using, okay? We're not going to go over an example of exactly how to use the comparable interface because there's really good examples in the book starting at page 725. Um, but this is the idea that I really want to leave you with is that when we're using an interface like this, what we really care about is making sure we follow the proper semantics for that interface because we've agreed to use that interface. And if we agree to use it, but then use it incorrectly, it doesn't do much good in terms of making our code reusable or readable or understandable by other programmers. So keep in mind that this is what using an interface looks like. It's about following the semantics, following the contract that we agree to follow. In the next video, we're going to talk about inconsistent interfaces, and then we're going to talk about the clonable interface a little bit, and then we're going to talk about inner classes after that. So there's a lot uh, that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, make sure that you're staying up on the lecture material. And again, in the next video, we're going to talk about something called inconsistent interfaces.